Studio and speakers on. All right, turning two outlets on. See? I didn't have to get out of my chair. Hey everyone, it's Leisha, and today we're gonna be talking about gear. Gear. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. giving you guys an update on what gear I currently have right now for my music bedroom studio. My bedroom music studio. Yeah. It's been so long since I updated you guys on this because the last video I had on my equipment was around early last year. So if you guys haven't watched that, you guys can check it out. The link is gonna be in the description. I suggest if you guys are looking into covering your own songs or putting out your own originals, I suggest that's a good video to start with. Because in that video, I'm gonna be running you guys through what equipment you would need to start recording. This is the current situation of my desk. As you can see, I have my two KRK monitors behind me. And I have my Samsung curved monitor, 27 inches. And I've designed the setup to be more ergonomic because in my previous setup, I was really struggling because I would spend like hours on my chair. It's not easy to work when your laptop is too high up or too low. Just those simple things that delay my work efficiency I had them fixed with this desk setup. I want to be able to freely adjust it, like move it backward, move it forward towards me. Because I work for hours and I like moving around just so my body doesn't get too strained or too, too stuck. But the monitor mount has really helped me a lot because I am able to finally like just adjust myself a little bit more instead of having it stationed on a stand on my desk. Okay, as you all know, I recently did a desk setup makeover. So if you guys haven't watched it, you guys can check it out. The link is also gonna be in the description. Yeah, um, I made these speaker stands, the stands that my speakers are standing on. <laughs> in my desk setup makeover, you guys can find out how I actually made these speaker stands. So yeah, those are the main pieces on my desk, my speakers and my monitor. Because the entire setup is actually powered by my MacBook 15 inch 2018 model. Okay, now time for me to talk about my microphone because in the previous video, I actually was not able to touch on this specific microphone which is the Blue Ember. And many of you guys have been commenting like, you didn't talk about the Blue Ember, how is it? At that time, I actually just got it. So I got it from Amazon around $99. So that's like 5,000 pesos. I've been using it ever since. Ever since that video, I made it a point that I would use it in every single video I have. I've used it to record my single, Ciao Bella. And I've used it in so many song covers on this channel. So if you guys want to check it out, see how it sounds, it's all on my YouTube channel. Subscribe, watch the song covers. So I hope the people who commented about me not talking about the Blue Ember in the previous video are already satisfied because I'm touching on it now and I'm telling you guys it's super worth the buck. Like I said earlier, nothing much has changed with my equipment on my desk. I just have a new keyboard. Okay, so this is my current keyboard. It's the Royal Kludge RK71 in white. So this is one of the cheap mechanical keyboards you guys can get out there. And the reason why it actually looks cute is because I changed the keycap. And I saw this rainbow keyboard and I really wanted it. And I didn't know where I could buy the rainbow keycap. So I had to buy two sets of keycaps just to achieve this look. I'll just add some links down below on where I got my keycaps. If you guys want to try them out on your keyboard. But guys... The sound. I thought I would be annoyed by the noise, but the longer I typed on it, the more I didn't really mind how it sounds. Like, it, it's not disturbing when I'm like in the zone typing. Maybe to other people in the room, could it could be disturbing. These are in brown switches, by the way. My friend just recommended it, so I'm, I'm really very new. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. So to start off, my friend recommended the RK71 and I'm really happy with it so far. It's it's a Bluetooth keyboard as well, but I really love plugging it in using a cable <laughs> because I think the, the coil blue cable is really adorable and it matches the vibe for my really colorful pastel rainbow keyboard. <laughs> okay, up next is my DIY macro pad. Basically what it does in a nutshell, I could program each key to 
trigger certain commands. So for example, when I press this key, it will trigger the command for copies, which is command C. And then if I press this one, it will trigger command V, which is paste. Mine is a DIY macro pad mainly because this is not designed to be a macro pad. This is actually a num pad. I use it a lot for editing, for video editing. I have commands for like cut, trim. I also have commands for undo, redo, and my emoji button. So when I press this one, my emoji bar comes out. It's made my life so much easier because I don't have to press all the commands like command and then shift and then A or something like that. I don't have to do all that. This one does it for me. I click this one and it will press all of those commands for me. So it had a different set of keycaps before, but since it's mechanical, like my mechanical keyboard, I can easily just change it. And I, I printed out some labels so that I can label each command that I set. So I'm sure by now you guys are wondering how was I able to program this. Okay, I have no background in programming or whatsoever, so I actually had to scavenge the internet to find out how I can program these on a MacBook because all I see on the internet are programming for PC. It's actually not hard at all to program your keys. All you have to do if you're using a Mac is download the app called USB Overdrive. Once you set it up, it's gonna appear in your system preferences. Click on that and then plug in your numpad or your keyboard that you wanna use as your macro pad. And then it will take you to the settings where you can actually program each key and it's super simple I'm gonna link you guys to the website in the description box so if you guys want to try it out create your own DIY macro pad I actually posted a tutorial on TikTok on how to do it if you guys want to see that follow me on TikTok and I'm also gonna link the video in the description okay so the audio interface I'm using and I have always been using is the M audio M track 2x2 so it means you can have two inputs in it, a guitar and a mic. So that's great for me because I don't really need that much mic inputs. And I've been using this audio interface for over three years. And it has never failed me. And I absolutely love the big knob in the middle. Up next is my MPK Mini, my Akai MPK Mini. It's my main MIDI keyboard that I use for production. I use my MIDI keyboard a lot. And another launch pad I have is my MIDI Fighter 3D. Okay, this is my MIDI Fighter 3D. I recently spilled water on it, but it's alive. Thank God. <laughs> Actually, this year, I've spilled water on so many of my gear. It's terrible. It's the worst thing ever to get your gear wet. Have swimming gear. It's It's... It's not fun. But anyway, going back, this is my MIDI Fighter 3D. I also have another launch pad called the Machine Micro 2, but I don't have these on my desk mainly because I don't want all of my gear to clutter up my space. I don't really use this as often when I produce music unless I'm working on vocal chops or samples. That's the only time this comes out. So these are the headphones I use when I'm recording my vocals. They're the Iron Man Limited Edition Audio-Technica M50X monitor headphones. And I don't really use it to listen to music, but when I need to record vocals, this is what I use because they give me a clean sound. So it means that they're not super bass boosted. So for regular listening to music, I usually use my Apple AirPods Pro or my Beats. But yeah, as you guys can see, the color is in red and gold. It's the limited edition Iron Man collection of Audio-Technica. I have my MacBook Pro 15 inch, which is on a MacBook stand. Beside my MacBook is my Seagate 3 terabyte hard drive because I have bad experiences with me breaking the portable hard drives. Every time I have those mini hard drives, they always break and I lose all of my files. It's terrible. And this hard drive never leaves my desk. I make sure to back my computer up every two weeks. Ever since my laptop got wet, I've learned my lesson. I have to back up my computer, my files. They're super important to me, so get yourself a desktop hard drive. Don't bring it anywhere, don't move it. Just keep it there and just keep it safe and have it back up your entire computer just in case. I don't know if you can see it from this view, but on my hard drive, I actually attached my USB hub that powers my webcam and it also powers my mechanical keyboards. I can actually turn 
things on and off with a click of a button and it's off. Instead of using a mouse, I use a trackpad because I'm more used to using trackpad since I come from a MacBook and it's so much easier for me to just do gestures rather than right clicking. I'm not used to using a mouse <laughs> so I have the trackpad instead. And over here, this is my wireless charger so when I'm working and I'm not really on my phone and my phone's like dying <laughs> as always, I would just leave my phone here and have it charge or my AirPods. I recently just discovered that I could wirelessly charge my AirPods Pro. So that's why I'm really happy. So every time I use it, I just lay it down there and it charges on its own. So it's, that's so cool. Ashley just stays on my desk because she reminds me so much of my Google Home. And my Google Home is the one that powers everything on this desk and every light in my room. I might seem like a lazy person because I'm asking Google Home to turn everything on and off, but in reality, it takes so much effort to set everything up. It's not easy. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how I actually power on my studio. I'll have to turn everything off first. Studio and speakers off. All right, turning off two outlets. See? <laughs> it's so easy. Now everything is turned off. I'm gonna ask Google to turn everything back on again. Studio and speakers on. All right, turning two outlets on. See? I didn't have to get out of my chair. And before I actually installed my Google Home, I would stand up and press so many on and off buttons just to turn everything on on this desk and now everything is controlled by a smart plug that is linked to my google home okay that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys picked something up or learned something from my equipment setup music gear i honestly don't know what this video is going to be called but if you guys have any more thoughts or questions comment them down below and yeah subscribe to my channel hit that bell button so you get updated whenever i post a new video and i'll see you guys in the next video stay lit fam i support you hey eh? <laughs>